Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this table. Alright, so let's repeat that. A mango stand sells its produce for five for eight dollars. Put on glasses. To calculate the selling price of six mangoes. To calculate the selling price of six mangoes, we need to use division. Right? This is called the unit rate. What is the unit rate? To calculate the selling price of any amount of mangoes, you first need to divide, and that's called the unit rate. How much does it go by for one? Because if I know how much mango is sold for one, I can know the amount for any. Right? And I simply need to multiply by the amount of units which is like 30 mangoes is times 30 right so therefore one mango will be sold one mango will be sold for eight dollars divided by five everything's okay yeah one mango will be sold for eight dollars divided by five. One point six. Okay. Yes, one point six dollars. How did you get that? Good. 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 One point six dollars. Alright? Then the next step is using multiplication. To find the selling price of six mangoes, use multiplication to find the selling price of six mangoes, which will be six times one point six dollars, and that's it. We're gonna move on now into proportions. All right. So now we're gonna move into, as I said, direct and indirect proportions. So this is just a review of what we did so far. Proportions. Alright, and let's quickly go back and give you some notes and proportions. Direct proportion. Direct proportion. Direct proportion has two methods. So you see the one with the proportion question with the car and the liters of gas? Anybody remember that question? There were two ways we could solve it. One equivalent ratio ratios method and two the equivalent rate method now sometimes it's very difficult to notice the difference. Right? So I'm gonna write the two methods on the board and I want one person to reason out why ratios would be which and why not it would be the other. Alright, so here's the first method. I'm gonna say 400 kilometers. The speed at which was going was 400 kilometers. Alright? 400 kilometers. Divided by x kilometers All right. We'll have 30 liters Divided by 1 liter 
So this is one way, this is one method you could use. Or the next would be 400 kilometers. I'm gonna put a slash. 400 kilometers divided by 30 liters. And then you say unknown kilometer divided by one liter. There's a difference. The first thing to know is to Realize, what's the difference between these two ways of writing? Look at it closely. Any difference you see? What, what is changed between them? The way you position the end. Where position goes? The third, like chaos and leaders. Because you put the 30, uh -huh. the 30, um, yeah, the 30, and you put it um, underneath the 400 um, Right. Uh -huh. Instead of, and then the other one, you put, I can't even So, so you, you got it because I switched something, as I said. But here's the thing though. On one of these, the units match. So I had kilometers to kilometers. And then on this one, the units are different. So the question therefore asks, is it ratios or rates where the two quantities have to be the same? Revise the definition of rate. So, what's the definition of a ratio? The comparison between two quantities. Okay? What's the definition of a rate? How one quantity changes with respect to another. One of these it has to be the same two quantities, and the other it has to it can be two different quantities. Which one had to be the same two quantities? Is it ratio or rate? Rate. Okay. Anybody else? Which one has to be the same two quantities? Ratios. You have to directly compare two same things, or is it rate where you have to directly say one? Quantity change with respect to the other. So, we have a difficult question. Ratio? Ratio? Alright, so look at this one. I know they're looking at my face directly, but this one is the ratio method. And this one is the Great method. And let me just quickly explain why. Those cars you hear outside, right? They're traveling on the road. That's a distance. And they're moving with respect to time. So time and distance are two different things, right? That's why you see kilometers per hour. So when I say I travel kilometers per liter, those are two different quantities. So picture the car scenario again. That's why we say the car travels as a rate, at a rate because it's moving at a distance with another quantity time. This car now is moving at a distance with quantity of liters. So there will be a rate. But in ratio, you're comparing how fast the car moves with respect to another car. Right? You're comparing how much one car get how much gas one car uses with respect to another car's gas usage. So they're two different things. So a ratio always has to have the same quantities and a rate can compare two different quantities such as time, money, distance, all right. So a ratio compares two same quantities, right? And versus a rate which compares two different quantities. And put an example beside each one. So let me give an example for rate. Kilometers per hour. Right? And all the example of a ratio. Think about it. What two things could I compare right now? I could compare boys to girls. Right? I could compare the amount of ties to mass, I don't know, something like that. 
Those are literally two of the same principles, where things that you wear, for example. Alright? But if I'm comparing our two different quantities, kilometers and meters, those are rates. Okay. So let's work out the question using two methods. So for method one, as I said last class, we're simply going to say cross multiply. So we'll get 30 times this unknown, we'll put an x, 400 times this one, right? So we'll get 30x is equal to 400. Let's pause there. Let's see what we get here. Wouldn't we get the same thing? Because it's the same 30 multiplied the unknown x. So it will always give you the same answer. All right? Write that for me. The two methods will always give you the same answer. Perfect. Does everybody understand so far? All right. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to give a question and we're going to talk about it quickly before we move on. So we're going to finish right. I think you guys will like this one. Okay? If I go to the gym and I no, let me see that. If two liters of petrol I love cars, I know guys love cars. I'll give a girl example for this one. If two liters of petrol, P E T R O L, right? Cost five dollars and forty cents. What is the cost of five liters of petrol using the unitary method? So what is the cost of what? Five liters of petrol using the unitary method. Okay. Let's erase the board and let's go through it together. This is the last question we're going to before so we move on. Okay. Let's go through it again. Alright. So can you remember what I said? Two liters and what? If two liters cost five dollars and forty cents. So I'm gonna put the five dollars and forty cents and I'm gonna ask. One important question. Is the money and the petrol the same quantity? Is money and gas the same thing? So that means we're dealing with a rate. Right? So I'm going to put the $5.40 divided by the 2 liters. Alright? That's how we know it's a rate. So we're going to use the unitary method now. First step. When you divide these two values, you can just picture that there's no quantity. Just say you have 5.40 divided by 2. And that's it. So let's erase the quantities for now. Alright? When you divide these two, you get 2.70. And we call this the unit rate. Now it's essential for you to recall these describing what you're doing. Because sometimes you get lost in your work. You see in math exams, most teachers actually mark more for steps than answers. So whenever you in a math exam, you say, Jean, I don't even know what the answer is. If you literally explain what you think, what you're doing, you earn more marks than the final answer. The final answer is typically worth just one mark. And the content that you're describing is worth another one mark. So what should you prefer? A wrong answer and giving up, or just explaining what you wanted to do? Alright, so you want to get at least a point to just explain or describe what you're doing. Okay, after you get the unit rate now, asks calculate the cost of 5 meters, so you will just simply multiply by 5. And that's it. This is the unitary method. Let's 
assume the proportion of the So now, the proportion method is what I told you beforehand where we literally just have two rates in a ratio, right? Because remember, as you can recall, a proportion is a combination of rate plus ratio. Anybody remember that? Yes. All right. So... The first thing I need to do, put two big colons. Right? Just so you always recall that, okay, I'm going to have a rate over here, and I'm going to have another one here, and I'm comparing them in a ratio. So on the left-hand side, we're going to put the rate that we do know, which is the 5.40. So we're going to say 2L divided by the 5.40. So 2 liters. Could be the other way around, but for now I'm just using like this. Right? Then we're going to say is equal to 5 liters that we want to use. Right? Divided by the unknown amount it will cost. Okay? Now, I want someone to come on the board and explain the next two steps to solve. I feel like they want to try
divided by 2. You know, when I was in school, I had an entire book working on questions like that. Like, I had one work, workout book and my math book. So, I advise you guys to get one. 13.5 divided by 2. is correct and then state what we got. So to prove that what we got, let's just simply write 6.75 back here. So instead of x, let's put 6.75. Alright, let me show you now. Okay. Alright. So this 6.75 really gonna be the amount that we use in five liters. All right? But you think though, we did something incorrect. And I hope one person can remind us. Remember, we need to prove that the answer is correct. If we go back to the first method, remember, we need to get the same answer in both methods. Right? We got 13.50 for the first method, right? And we got 6.75 here. So that means we did something wrong. Let's write the answer here. 13.50. Alright? No. This is. Yeah? Right. She found the missing link. So 5.40. I asked, what is 5.40 times 5? You guys told me 13.5. Okay? Right. It should be 27. So remember, I am just the marker. You guys are telling me what to do. So it should be 27. 27 point? 27. Okay. Alright? So now when we divide 27 by 2, we should get our answer. So we're going to say x is equal to 27 divided by 2, and that is? So 27 divided by 2, what's the answer? 13.5? Alright. Okay? So that's why I advise you guys. Sometimes when you're getting your, your answers, Try the other method quickly to see if you got the right steps. Alright? Always pay in advance. So this 13.50 means that we use 5.40 times 5. Alright? So 5 liters of gas cost $13, while 2 liters of gas just cost $5. That's it. Alright, take that off for me. Now, in the next section, we're going to talk to Nicholas a little bit and just to pick his brain out of it. We're not going to work on anything right now. We're just going to ask some questions. Just to review everything we've done. Because in the next class, we're moving on to a new topic. Just, as I said, revision. So, Nicholas, stick with me. Let's work on a question together. Let's talk about it. Do you recall what we said about the types of proportions? We said there was direct proportion and indirect proportion. And we gave a pretty good example last class when we discussed it online. When we said the amount of liters changed, the price changed, right? So we stepped from two, it cost five dollars. But if I increase the amount to five, the price changed to thirteen dollars. Stick with me? Now this is direct proportion. This is an example. of direct proportion. Wow. <laughs> Let's put that in there for you. Direct proportion. 
No, I'm no longer the teacher for a second. I want you to reason it out. What do you think direct proportion means? If I change something, and then something else changes with respect to it, what is that definition really? Or just give me an example in your daily life. That's a direct proportion. Look at when you study, what happens? Right? So the more you study, the more you, the more you eat, the bigger you get. The more you um, read the Bible, the closer you get. Right? So, right. So it increases with respect to another. So the more thing you do, another thing increases with that same rate. So if I change the amount of gas I want to buy, the price changes. Really? So the higher something, that's the lower the other value. Right, that's going to be an indirect proportion. So we're going to get to know. So the next topic we're going to look at is as a chef, indirect proportion. What if the more you study, you learn less? That would be an indirect proportion. Because as one thing is increasing, the other thing is going down. Right, it's no longer directly changing. Okay. So let's rub off the board. Next topic is indirect proportion. Indirect proportion. Alright? And I know you guys are saying, Sir, it's about to finish. So I'm not going to go too much in depth. I'm just going to write the topic. Indirect Proportion. And let me quickly give you a scenario. Quickly. Alright? As one quantity increases, increases, another quantity. Decreases. Now, for those who are in the class online, you can recall a pretty good example that shows what this is. Alright? So, you remember? Tell me. So, the, the more you, in a car, the more you drive, the more you drive. Right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Picture of someone building this school. If one person was building this school, it would take a very long time, like 20 years, right? Oh yeah, I remember that. Remember that one, right? But if a hundred persons come together and decide to build a school, it would take them a hundred months or a hundred days. So it takes less time the more persons you have. Right? So I want you guys to give me two examples. Give two examples of indirect Proportions due next class. Alright? And if you finish this, you can even go the extra mile and ask me, sir, I want more work. <laughs> I know that's very weird to hear from a student, but they I hear that, I'll actually be a happy teacher. Sir, give me more work. I'll be happy to hear. Okay, everybody? Any questions? Sir, with the two examples, do you have to actually write down a question or do you just write down? It's not right. That's not my question. I sent it to her to explain. So you're going to tell me what the scenario is and then quickly explain it in a sentence or two. All right, and that's it for our class. Let's quickly start recording. You've been a wonderful class.